Hello, my name's Sam from Alder Systems, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate the simple integration of a 2N IP Verso into Control 4. integrate a 2M Verso into Control 4 and there is a 2M wiki article on it but I'm a visual learner I don't really enjoy scrolling through white papers or manuals so if you like me and a visual learner I hope this video is of some use to you so in my lab setup I have a Control 4 EA3 and a T3 wireless touchscreen first thing we need to do is log into the 2N Verso web UI if it's factory default then you log in with admin and 2N and then the Verso is going to prompt you to change the password from default. If we go to services and then phone and SIP1, there's no information in here. Then we go to the directory and users and there's no users in the directory. So we've got a completely blank Verso. If we then go to services and HTTP API, in here is where we allow the Control 4 driver to communicate with the Verso elements and provide the services in the Control 4 system. Under Account 1 are features that the third party control system can use, which has a username and a password, but we haven't got to touch anything in here. Back on services, the first option is the system API. API is the application programming interface and the connection type needs to be set to unsecure TCP. So an unsecure connection using TCP, which is the transmission control protocol. TCP is a two-way communication protocol. And then on authentication, we're gonna set that to none. So no form of security is being applied to any usernames or passwords, such as a hash function, for instance, at this stage. Access to the API is going to be completely open at this moment. We then press save, and then we add the Verso to Composer. In Composer, 2M Versos now utilize SDDP, or the Simple Device Discovery Protocol. If we go to the Discover tab, and in there, we should then see the Verso. So before, when the older drivers were around, you used to have to add in a instance of the Verso driver, and then add a separate instance of the camera driver, and it just got a bit messy, a bit of a pain. It's all now in the same driver, much like the DS2 configuration. So I'm just going to double click on the Verso and add it in and it brings that driver into the project. And that's all we do at this stage. The driver has fields for the call group, IP address, device name, serial number, firmware version, connection status, the HTTP API authentication, so the username and password, and also the SIP details. The HTTP API and SIP details have uh, predefined usernames and passwords, which you can change should you wish, but you need to make sure you update them to match up in the Verso as well. And then we just need to add in the communication agent into Composer if you haven't done already. Before you were unable to use the default call group when calling from a Verso to Control 4, which is all you would have had to create a separate call group and give it a different name. I think recommended was something like 200, but now we can use default all call group. So then after we've added the communication agent, we then go back to the instance of the 2N driver and then press auto config under the actions tab. And because we brought the 2N Verso in via SDDP, Control 4 knows it's located by its IP address. And because we set the system API to an unsecured connection, and no authentication, we can freely push the configuration from Composer to the Verso. Once press auto config, the driver is going to push the HTTP API username and password, the SIP details, which also include the username and the password, and the IP address of the Control 4 controller, and create a Control 4 user in the directory and add that user to the button on the Verso. If we give it a few seconds, we can then go back to the Verso either on our web browser or directly from the Control 4 driver. But as I'm logged into the web UI, I'm going to go back to that. Once we're back in the web UI, we can then go to services and phone and SIP1. And we can see the details have been populated in the field to reflect the Control 4 SIP server. We have the IP address of the Control 4 controller and it gives us a registered status. We can then go to the HTTP API and we can see the system API is now unsecure with basic authentication. 
we can set the system API to secure TLS to add a layer of security, TLS being the transport layer security, which will protect the TCP connection, thus securing the HTTP information between the control 4 and the 2 end verso. Basic authentication uses base64 encoding. However, calling between the verso and the control 4 will work, but when you press auto config or refresh the navigators, then the connection status will go to an invalid connection type. So it's best to leave how Control 4 pushes the config up to the Verso. I'll explain shortly why this shouldn't be a problem. The other option in the authentication option is digest, which applies a hash function to the username and password to the API. This is usually an MD5 hash. We can see that the camera API are unsecure using digest authentication. So the username and the passwords for that element of the API uses is hashed. If we change the camera API to secure, you'll lose the motion JPEG stream, but you'll still be able to use the H.264 stream. also found that if you change any of the connection types from an unsecure to secure or vice versa, the Control 4 driver will state that it's an invalid connection type or an invalid authentication type. The settings control for push of the Verso shouldn't be a problem security wise in the grand scheme of things. The driver only allows for none or basic authentication, but to exploit the connection, someone will have to access the network and sniff the traffic such as usernames and passwords by installing say a rogue device on the local area network or crack the Wi-Fi password and gain access to the wireless local area network. And then they've either got to have a copy of Composer on them or no the Verso password or no HTTP API commands to send to the Verso from the web browser. But that's why it's really important to use strong wireless passwords and host device passwords, so your administrator passwords as well. And secure the LAN to avoid rogue devices joining by shutting down ports on your network switches. On the Verso, we can then go to directory and users, and then we can see that control for user has been created there. If we then go to hardware and buttons and you can see that a user has been added to the button group. Now we can add a lock control or gate control to the interface of the control 4. In Composer I'm going to search for the door lock driver and bring that into the project. Under the intercom section of the Verso driver we can set two lock control custom buttons. I'm going to tick the first option. We then need to bind the lock to the Verso connections. Then going to go to the programming tab and find the Verso and then in the drop down on the event side we're going to find UI button 1 press and then we can program the relay control against that so I'm going to select the lock under the device actions window on the right hand side and add the action to unlock the door. So unlocking the door is going to close the relay and I'm going to lock the door which will reopen the relay. I'm going to add in a 5 second delay between them two commands so the relay is going to close for five seconds and then reopen and that's all done so I'm going to refresh navigators and make a call from the Verso to the control 4. I've now got the option for the unlock, I can answer the call, press unlock and you'll hear the tone indicating the Verso relay has been closed and the gate's now opening and we have two-way audio and one-way video and that's the very straightforward initial setup of a Verso in a control 4 system. Just so you know, configuring user codes and Verso modules such as RFID readers, fingerprint readers, Bluetooth readers and combo units are all configured in the Verso and not Control 4. But if you want to create an action based on the event from the Verso to Control 4, you can by using the generic HTTP driver from Chalmain. Thank you for watching this video and I hope it's of some help.